Wednesday, a busy day for the New England Patriots in a move that's No, I'm going to go, Molly, if that's okay. Yes. Do you mind, Stephen yes, A., go if I go? I'm going to plunge on Please, this. Please, go ahead. Sure. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm still not exactly sure how I feel about I may need about 24 more hours to let this completely sink in. I'll go mm -hmm. so far right now as to say I like the deal for the New England Patriots, but I definitely mm -hmm. do not love the deal. And the only reason I'm giving Belichick benefit of doubt here is because of his track record for making trades that initially make you say, huh? And then long term make you say, Oh, now I get it. On this count, he has been the branch Ricky, if you will, of pro football in that he has always been the guy, the best guy in the league for trading players one year before everybody else in the world thinks they should be traded. But those were all aging players, such as a Richard Seymour and a Randy Moss, Logan Mankins. And we are talking about a Chandler Jones who just turned 26 years of age, who probably has his prime years, I don't know, four, five, six prime years left in that stud body of his. And as we all know, Chandler Jones is that rarest of commodities. He is a stud pass rusher. And I believe he will be missed next year, even though they did go out after that, probably was already in the works. And they landed Chris Long, who will give them some depth in the rotation. Chris Long's another aging player. He's going to play at 31 years of age during next se football season. And he tailed off, I thought, dramatically with the Rams over the last two or so years. So is that going to change the balance of power? You still have Ninkovich. You still have Shear. still have a couple other young guys who will come up and get their shots next year. But listen, Chandler Jones, it, it, unless I'm missing something here, makes this trade for the Arizona Cardinals, especially for one year, a great trade. Now Chandler Jones after next year, as you know Stephen A, can be a flat out free agent who is going to command, I, I'm going to assume, massive free agent market money a year from now. Again, as a Brady supporter, not so much a Patriot fan, but as a Brady supporter, I, I sure wish that Chandler Jones could be a Patriot for one more year, but Belichick is saying, well, I'm not going to commit that much money to him after next year, and I've got to sign a Jamie Collins and a Dante Hightower and Malcolm Butler, and we can go on. There are other key players on the defense. We get that. But still, right. to lose Chandler Jones next year is a big deal, which brings me to the big if here. How much faith did Bill Belichick lose in Chandler Jones because of his late season incident in which he showed up shirtless and disoriented at the Foxborough police station and the Boston Globe reported that it, he was a victim of a bad dose of synthetic marijuana. Wow, really? So now I'm going to ask the the monumental Stephen A. Smith's uh, question. Can he just stay off that weed? I, I don't know. Is that going to be a big issue going forward? Which brings me to big issue number two. Jonathan Cooper comes to the New England Patriots. I got to tell you, as the seventh overall pick in the two thir uh, 2013 draft, Stephen A., I'd say he qualifies as a flat-out bust in Arizona. They couldn't find a position for him. He couldn't stay healthy. Fell completely out of favor. They were so desperate they are going to even try him at center next year. He was obviously picked as an offensive guard out of North Carolina. I don't know. I know the Patriots loved him going into that draft. I know that their then offensive line coach, Dante Scarnecchia, really loved him. And Scar is returning next year as the offensive line coach. So can he revitalize the career of one Jonathan Cooper and give Brady at least one quality blocker up ahead of him next year? I, I hope so, but I, I'm not sure I can take that to anybody's bank yet. So again, you get a second rounder in return. It's late second round. That's pretty good for the Patriots. That gives them the number 60 and 61 picks in the draft. I'm sure Belichick will make hay with those picks. But in the big picture, man, when you trade a stud pass rusher in his prime, it just makes me a little queasy. I got to be honest. Well, I don't blame you for being a little queasy, but I think that you're looking at it all wrong. I think that when you take into account the synthetic marijuana and some concerns about that and what have you, well, clearly, you know, any, any football team would be concerned about it, but I don't think it's enough uh, for 
uh, Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots decide to decide to unload a 26-year-old stud that registered 12 and a half sacks for them last year, uh, like Chandler Jones did. What I would say to you, Skip Bayless, is that the primary concern is not just free agency of 2016 and how you've got some guys that you need to take care of moving forward, but it's also about taking care of the one individual on your squad who is clearly the most important individual, and that would happen to be Tom Brady, who was sacked 38 times last year, hit significantly more, is 38, approaching 39. You just have a guy in Peyton Manning that just walked away from the game, and we all know that the erosion of his skills per se wasn't really about that. It was about his health. And maybe it was because of the four neck surgeries and the residual impact later on that that had on him from years ago or what have you. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're putting Tom Brady under that kind of predicament. So you've got to protect him at all costs. This is a guy that's looking forward to playing at least the next four or five years who believes that he can do it if you can keep him upright. It, one would argue that that's the reason that the New England Patriots lost the AFC Championship game because obviously they were putting some licks on Tom Brady. They were applying a lot of pressure. We all know that. Again, he was sacked 38 times. He was hit significantly more. And you've got to do what you can to protect him. You yourself, Skip Bayless, lamented the fact that nothing was done because of the bevy of injuries and the lack of support that they had. The offensive line was your number one complaint about the New England Patriots mm -hmm. all of last year. Yep. Now here you got his now here you have this guy Jonathan Cooper. Okay, breaks his leg in, in, in you know uh, was it third preseason game yep. of year of 1. Rookie year. Had yep. turf toe. Mm -hmm. Had turf toe. Ultimately lost his uh, job to Lawson. Comes back, plays about 9 games, starts about 9 games before losing his job to Lawson again. Obviously, they say he could play both sides. He's 6'2", 311 pounds, can block, can pick off linebackers as well on that second layer. The reality is, is that there's potential there, but like Bruce Arian said when he was being critical of the young man, this past season, he says he's athletic, he's gifted, he's got a lot of potential, and in time, we think he's going to be special. The problem is we don't have time because this is a prime opportunity for the Arizona Cardinals to make some noise at that particular juncture. So understanding all of that, the reality was clear. He had to sit there and make a decision. And so when you look at it from that perspective, you might also he think that he needs a new start because this guy, Jonathan Cooper, was perceived as being an individual skip, according to the reports, you have to wrap your arms around him. He's not the kind of guy that you can really get into. Now, you brought up Dante Skarnecchia, uh, the offensive line coach for the New England Patriots. He's not known for being, you know, that, that, no. that soft pedal dude. You know, he'll get up in you. He'll get in your face. And they're saying that's not the way to coach a Jonathan Cooper. So it'll be interesting to see. The flip side to it is that no matter how good and how gifted we all know Bruce Arians to be, the reality is that when it comes to the New England Patriots, they're head and shoulders above most organizations in terms of discipline and professionalism. And because of those two ingredients, they're capable of peeling the best out of a bevy of individuals more so than not. Yeah. When you look at it from that perspective and the fact that the primary objective it's clearly to protect Tom Brady. I have no problem with it. Okay. Well, here's my problem with everything you just brought up. I'm not hearing a conclusion from you because what if the conclusion is that Jonathan Cooper as a New England Patriot under Skarnecchia continues to be the oft-injured underachiever, underperformer that he was for three years with the Arizona Cardinals. What, what if he's just that guy? What if he, he was overrated by everyone in the draft? What if, what if he's just not what everybody thought he was and you gave up Chandler Jones for that and a second rounder, of course? It, it's just, that wouldn't be enough. Well, you're right, but it's a chance that you have to take because the primary objective is to protect Tom Brady. And that's what I'm saying here. Now, if this were any other position, Skip, then I get where you're coming from because for the New England Patriots, it would appear to make no sense. But if the objective is to do all that you can in every way imaginable to protect Tom Brady from getting hit too often, then I think that's an investment. That's a chance that you have to take because in, in, in every other 
position with the New England Patriots. They've taken chance after chance, but oftentimes, more times than not, we've sat back wondering, when the hell are you going to take care of Tom Brady? You can't take this guy for granted. He's asked to do so much with the weapons that, you know, with, with, with a less significant level of weapons compared to what some of his contemporaries have had to work with. How come Tom Brady can't get that? We've asked ourselves that question no, I, I, on many, I many that. occasions. I, I'm with you on yeah. that. I'm just saying, are you sure about this guy? Because you don't seem saying, that sure. I, no, 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 no I, I'm not that sure. I'm saying that it's worth the chance because of what you're trying to do. Okay. What you're trying to do is to protect Tom Brady. And if you've got to roll the dice to do all that you can to elevate his level of protection, that outweighs Chandler Jones, even if it is Chandler Jones, who's a stud. Okay, he, he is a stud. And in my long history of covering this league, you don't part ways quickly with a Chandler Jones. Now, again, if there's more to the marijuana issue than we know, well, I, I don't know enough about it. But if that's the problem, if, if that was the reason that Belichick said, I got to cut the cord here, I'm fine with that. But if it was just because he had a chance to get a player that they loved before the 2013 draft to protect Tom Brady, I'm not good with that. Listen, Rob Ninkovich, who I love, is an overachiever. He's not that talented because he bounced around a couple teams before he landed with New England. This guy, this guy, Chandler Jones, this guy, this is big time talent. This is game changing raw ability that you just can't, it doesn't grow on trees. You, you can't just snap your fingers and find it. And, and you're going to miss it next year. I don't care what you say. You can throw all those other names at me. You will miss Chandler Jones next year. Well, I'm not, well, I'm not implying in any way that you're not going to miss Chandler Jones. But there have been uh, a slew of situations over the years where we thought the New England Patriots would miss somebody or whatever, and they've been to five consecutive AFC championship games. They find a way to continue to contend and to be in the thick of things, and they did so without prioritizing protecting their number one asset.